this video you will learn the art of guesstimating answers. This is sometimes also called eyeballing answers. Guesstimating involves quickly eliminating answers that are clearly too big or too small. Here at the MSAG UCAT course, we don't sugarcoat things. We know you will be under a lot of pressure in the quantitative reasoning subtest of the UCAT. There are certain questions we may need to give ourselves only 10 to 15 seconds to answer, but rather than take a 1 in 5 guess, guesstimating an answer can give you a better than 50-50 chance of being correct in an astonishingly short space of time. Our objectives during this video are to show you when to guesstimate and show you how to guesstimate and how not to guesstimate. Saving time is key, so let's get to it. So, when do you guesstimate? You can guesstimate on any question in which the answer choices are not super close to each other. If the answers are super close or almost identical to each other, then guesstimating won't work. But if there is a little bit of daylight between the answers, and especially if there's quite a big gap between them, then we can guesstimate confidently. Guesstimating is especially useful when finding exact values would take a long time, with lots of calculator button pressing. However, if you can use the calculator to get the exact answer reasonably quickly, then don't bother guesstimating. Furthermore, if you feel that doing it all in your head would take about the same time as finding the answer with the calculator, then of course, the safer bet is to use the calculator. Only guesstimate when you need to save time and can save time. Guesstimating can be used for questions of any type, including percentages, averages, tables and graphs. So you may be wondering, how does it work in practice? Well, let's see for ourselves. With this first question, let's see if you can identify why it is a good idea to guesstimate and then what answer you get to guesstimating. You could do it with a calculator, but for the purpose of learning a new trick, don't use it this time. Question 1. Safa sells 3,240 bottles of argan oil in January, 4,520 bottles in February, 5,830 bottles in March, and 6,060 bottles in April. To the nearest integer, how many more bottles did she sell per day in April than she sold per day in January? How would guesstimating help us here? Well, try to recall our two conditions to decide whether to guesstimate or not. In this case, both conditions are met. First, the answer choices are quite far apart, and second, calculating the correct answer could involve up to a minute of button pressing on the super fiddly UCAT calculator. Instead, let's guesstimate. We should know that there are 31 days in January. If Safa sold 3,240 bottles in January, that's just over 100 per day. Pick a number to call it, say, 105 bottles per day. Keep that number in your head. There are 30 days in April, and she sold 6,060 bottles. That was very close to 200 bottles per day. What is the difference between 200 bottles per day and 105 bottles per day? 95 bottles per day. The correct answer must be 97, as it is so close to our estimate. Using this method, we got to the correct answer much quicker than we would have by working out the exact answer with the calculator. Guesstimating is one of the best strategies in the UCAT to become one of the top scoring applicants. So let's practice this again with a different type of question. Once again, don't use the calculator even if you know how to do it with it. Try to think of how you could do it faster than your initial instinct.
The table shown on the screen gives information on the price and sales for each of five companies stocking product A. The table also shows whether those companies were UK registered for tax purposes. Question 2. Which of the UK registered companies had the greatest revenue from product A? This is a perfect question for guesstimating. Why? Because answering it the long way with the calculator would take forever. You'd have to multiply the price by the sales for the four UK registered companies, writing down each answer so you didn't forget. This would have been at least 60 to 90 seconds of work. Instead, we shall get the answer in 10 seconds. Immediately eliminate companies that have fewer sales at a lower price. For example, compared to company C, both company B and company E had fewer sales of product A at a lower price. They cannot possibly have more revenue from this product than company C. Don't forget that company D is already eliminated because it is not UK registered. It's now down to company A or company C. Compare their prices and their sales. The prices are very similar, £12 versus £11.50, but company C had much more sales of the product, selling about 9,300 against company A's 6,400. This makes company C the clear winner, without pressing a single button. The more you practice quantitative reasoning, the more you will see questions that can be guesstimated. Soon you'll be whooping for joy at the time you are saving in the test. We can't be exact, but from our experience, up to 25% of the quantitative reasoning questions can be answered by guesstimating. This is why it's so important you practice this skill. We hope that you are now aware of the time that can be saved with guesstimating and some of the scenarios in which you should guesstimate, as well as the occasions when it's best just to use a calculator. As always, you will only perfect the skill by practicing. So get to it, and good luck. That concludes another UCAT lesson. If you like the strategies and content we're developing and want to see more free content, please leave us a like and don't forget to subscribe. If you have any UCAT questions, leave us a comment below and we'll help you sort it out and get your preparation up to speed.